we're now in a position to finish off our uh, beginning of this application where we're using clustering to find geographical groups of stations for our NOAA weather data. So we finished off the last video. We have done the k-means. Uh, we did a fit and we got a model. Now this model basically contains the information for what the clusters were. It's really in this case it's the centers of the clusters. It knows about the 20 locations that it found that make good centers for clusters. In order to figure out which stations are in which clusters, which is what we actually want to do, we need to do a transform. And so the model that comes back is a transformer, just like the vector assembler was. And up here we called transform to, uh, to get our actual new um, uh, data frame. We need to do the same thing down here. So stations with clusters. We can uh, get this by taking the station cluster model and using it to transform the uh, stations uh, with loc data. Okay, so once again, we have this data frame that has the, uh, the locations assembled into the vectors. That was what we used here to build our, uh, our cluster model. And now we are going to use that to transform. And just to see what that's like, let's do stations with clusters dot show. And I will run that. Uh, so that we can see what this looks like and we'll see what it you know, kind of spit out as far as, as the data frame because we need, this is going to have an extra column in it which is the data that we want for which cluster each one of these stations was assigned to and then we want to use that to color our plot so previously we have this black and white plot of things um, and we want to, to color this in some way. So this is going through and it's doing the k-means clustering. And there we go, I'm actually getting a plot, but what matters to us here is the fact that we have this data frame, this table, and we have these predictions. Okay, so each of these different stations was given a different cluster number and this column is called prediction. So we want to use that to color this plot. Okay. And before we go and, and do that, it's, it's worth asking what is this going to look like? Uh, we basically expect little patches of this, especially in the US, these should be rather small patches to be in different colors. Uh, Figuring out how to do the colors is a little bit challenging because I, I can't give every one of the 2,000 uh, cluster values a completely distinct um, color value for it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a gradient that will use those predictions. So let's go ahead and let's pull out the predictions, much like we pulled out X and Y. Oh, uh, and actually this is still using stations. I want to do stations with clusters. Okay. And so I am going to select our prediction. It turns out that in a later video we might need to, to change the name of that. I want this as a double and we will collect those values to get down to an array. And then to color things in SwiftViz, it's helpful to make a color gradient. And so we will go ahead and we will build a color gradient. And it takes a bunch of tuples, basically, for the value and the color. These clusters are starting at zero. So I'm actually just going to make three colors here. I'm going to make it so that zero is a blue, 
value, and then halfway through, so 1,000, and I, it is important to put the 0, .0 uh, because these are tuples, so double or ints will be implicitly converted to, uh, to doubles if they are standing on their own. When they're part of a tuple, the tuple doesn't get implicitly converted. So uh, I'll make this middle value red. One of the things is that the actual locations of these centers is not necessarily, you know, so cluster one and cluster two don't necessarily have to be close to each other. And that's helpful to us because we're not going to have, uh, we're having a smooth gradient here. So we actually want the two, the, when things are close to each other, we want them to have very different values. Okay, so we'll put in a green, a red, or blue, a red, and a green for those values. And let's go ahead. The other thing that we need to do here is instead of making the symbol uh, color that, we need to take that color gradient and use it as a function to map the predictions. Okay, so we take our prediction values, which is, note, an array of doubles, and we're going to map it across the color gradient, which acts as a uh, a function from double to double, uh, or actually double to int, where it takes in a double value and spits out the, the integer value as an ARGB. Okay. Once again, there will be a pause while this does the, the clustering. And then the plot that pops up, we should see little groupings of, of colors, and then we can decide if this is good enough for what we want to do moving forward. Once again, we're only doing 2,000 uh, clusters at this point. Maybe that's not enough. Maybe we need more clusters. Maybe it's uh, too many. We'll, we'll have to look at the output here and make a, a value judgment on that to see if, if that is the right number of, of data points and, and the right number of clusters that we want. Okay, so there was our table and the plot when it pops up here after it plots. Turns out there's 103,000 points on this because there's a 103,000 stations that go into the, the rendering. And there we go. So we have clusters. Um, are these about the right size? And remember, what I am trying to do is we're going to go through a few more steps, and I want to take each one of these clusters and see if I can figure out what type of climate region it's in. So some of these clusters where things are sparse might be a bit bigger than I want, uh, but for the most part, especially through the areas where they're dense, I'm fairly happy with this. I, I believe that these clusters are uh, small enough that they probably shouldn't overlap across climate regions, and for that reason I think this will be suitable for the next step that we want to do to try to use some other machine learning algorithms uh, well, we're going to use one other machine algorithm, uh, learning algorithm, we're going to use regression, and then we're going to come back and use clustering again and see if then we can take that clustering and figure out climate regions. In this case, this clustering, it's worth pointing this out because remember, clustering is what we called an unsupervised learning. We don't have an answer here. It was kind of coming up with information for us, and we have to be able to interpret that data. In this situation, it's actually fairly easy to interpret the data because it's spatial, it plots out like this, you can see the different clusters and they make sense. It's possible, in fact, the next time we do clustering, we're going to get information that's a little bit harder to figure out if it's even meaningful. Okay? And so, uh, with that type of thing, we'll have to play with more stuff than we did here. This is actually a very simple clustering. The reason we're going to extend this example is because we also want to do a more challenging clustering so that we have to kind of test ourselves to, to interpret the data that we get out of it.